Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather and everything still looks like it's on track. Uh, here are the things I'm watching. I really didn't change anything on this. The pattern changed 1022 through the 28th with two different lobes or two different troughs of low pressure coming through. And it's possible there could be a third as well as a bonus. Uh, the beneficiaries of all this are going to be the West, basically the Northern and the Mountain West. Um, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Pacific Northwest, Banff, BC, all included. Unfortunately, with the first two lobes, I don't have a lot, much of anything or a lot for uh, California or northern New Mexico. Um, but a strong wind is going to be likely with this because it's going to bring the jet stream all the way south. It's going to buckle. All right, let me show you the current state of affairs. So this is your visible satellite for the day. And it's still just, I point this out yesterday, it was absolutely gorgeous. It was beautiful the way that these low pressures look out over the Pacific and sliding up into um, Alaska and BC. So let me mark these. You've got one there. You got another one up here. Looks like there's a cutoff low or riding the southern branch right there. Um, so here's how this probably looks. Something like this up and around. This would be your storm track or jet stream. And then likely to have some play here on the southern branch with that cutoff. But it's these lows that are going to make the difference. They'll come up over the top, and they're so large that as they do, they'll come down. And uh, let me just mark the high so you can kind of see how this is going to play out. So you've got this big high sitting across the west. What will happen is then this will get moved or dislodged back to the west over the Pacific, and that will open the door, and these guys will come south. So those are the two lobes. There could, Like I said, there could be a third. Um, behind all that. So I wrote about this this morning on my blog, chrystomer.com. Really would appreciate if you subscribe to this. It's easy to do at the bottom of the post. There is a, um, if you go and click on the post itself, it will take you in um, in its entirety. It looks like there's a comment on there. So we'll look at that live. But um, these are always valuable. I put a lot of valuable information on here. Um, if you go in there and just, just subscribe to this, I don't know why that button isn't showing up. Um, let's see what the comment is since we're in this already. Uh, one thought, Chris, thanks for the info as usual. Um, oh, that's nice. A viewer, um, yesterday we had some questions actually on the, uh, the forecast and it does look like it's still on track. Um, so I talked about wind in this a lot. Uh, I looked at the, the forecast wind gusts, and my feeling are that it's going to be strong, probably 40 to 85 mile an hour gusts between Saturday, Sunday, and Monday over most of these high peaks in Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. Long's Peak is on there. It's blowing 60 to 75 for four days straight up on top. Crestone reaches almost 100 mile per hour on Sunday. King's Peak is strong early on, then it backs off. Grand Teton runs about 30 to 55 throughout the period. So um, that's the way that uh, I, I plotted that out. And I tend to do a lot of wind forecasts because I forecast for teams around the world. Um, and wind is usually one of the most, um, the, one of the biggest factors of all for success on high peaks. Um, let me take you into the high res on some of these, on some of these, uh, these forecast images. So this is the future radar and satellite for Saturday night at 10 p.m. Uh, you can see the spiral, the snow heading through Idaho in a big sky uh, into uh, Bridger Bowl down into the Tetons and hitting the Wasatch squarely. There's a little bit of snow that slides down through the Sierra, but it is a glancing blow, I think, at best. All right, so here is Sunday morning at 9 a.m. The storm continues to sweep through Utah, heavy snow moving through Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and then it's hitting Colorado all mountain zones, heaviest snow above seven or 8,000 feet. Um, here is Sunday at, let's see, this is 6 p.m. Still snowing in Colorado, but it's coming to an end in Utah. And still some wraparound snow over the Tetons and into Montana. But by the time you get into Monday morning, a lot of that's moved out, and there's just leftover snow with wind in Colorado. Um, let me just show you what the GFS's interpretation of all this is it's always fun to look at. Yesterday, you might have remembered, it only really was confident in the first lobe, and it didn't portray anything really with the second or even a third. And I made the comment, I said, this isn't aggressive, 
but I believe it's there. I, I've seen it in the data, and indeed, today, here comes the first change, the first trough. There's 22, 23, 24. Here comes the second one. You see, I'm looking at the, the blue areas, the deep blues and the greens. Those are the, um, the lower pressures, the anomalies. There comes the second one, 26, 27. And then look what it does right here. There comes the third towards the 1st of November, and there may even be one behind that. So today the GFS is more on board with what I was thinking, what I was thinking yesterday, um, and it's more aggressive. Just spotting the trends, looking at changes like that are incredibly valuable as a forecaster. All right, here are my totals. Some of them have gone up, including the Wasatch Front, um, including the Tetons, including Big Sky. All those numbers have gone up. In Colorado, more snow west of the Continental Divide, probably 6 to 12, and a little bit less on and east of the Continental Divide. So west is best in Colorado. Still some decent amounts up in the Pacific Northwest, but uh, those have gone down, and the numbers for Banff have gone down as well. All right, so that's the way things are shaking out at this point. Everything still looks pretty good um, with the possibility of additional low-pressure systems behind the first. So that's optimistic. There's some optimism there. I'll keep things updated here. Always appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care.